Hello, we're going to look at an intro to my module 2 for finite math and what we're going to do with this one uh, I know it's just an intro but it'll take me a couple of videos to walk you through it so if you feel comfortable with matrices and systems of equations you can actually skip this uh, these videos okay so what we're going to talk about in this intro is first of all what is a system of linear equations? Well, it's basically uh, two or more equations. Here you have two equations and two unknowns, x and y. Here you have two equations and three unknowns. The unknowns are x1, x2, x3. And over here you have uh, three equations and three unknowns. And the idea is to see if you can find uh, the variables that will simultaneously solve all of the equations in the system. And so that's what we're going to look at. Now, I'm not going to read the notes. I know you can read the notes, so I'm going to leave the notes for you to read. And I'm just going to go to the, basically cover the three basic ways to solve systems of equations without using matrices and then we'll get into matrices later. One way to solve uh, systems of equations is by graphing. Um, that's not the greatest method, but it does give you a good visualization. And then the other two methods you can use is substitution method and elimination method. And actually these methods can be used on uh, linear equations, systems of linear equations, or systems of nonlinear equations. If you're going to solve a system by graphing, you're really only going to want to want it to have two variables because that way you're only dealing with a two-dimensional uh, type example. So here um, I have a system 2x plus y equals 8 and x plus 3y equals 9. Now all I have to do to graph uh, these is find the intercepts. So on 2x plus y equals 8, you can let x be 0, and that will get rid of that term. Then y will be 8. And then um, to solve for the uh, x-intercept, let y equal 0, and then solve this equation 2x equals 8, and you'll get x equal 4. So this graph goes through 0, 8, which is right here, and 4, 0, which is right here then you just get a straight edge or a ruler and draw the line through it. The second equation, if x is 0, uh, you can solve for y. 3y equals 9, so y would be 3. And then if you let y equal 0 and solve for x, uh, it will make this term disappear, and then you'll get x equals 9. And so that one goes through 0, 3, which is right here, and 9, 0, which is over here. And then when you draw the line through there, uh, you get that line. Now, the solution to these two linear equations are where they intersect. And one of the, the uh, disadvantages of solving a system this way is for you to really be sure that you have the solution, they need to intersect at integer values. So if you look at this, and, and the other thing you have to do is make sure you draw your graphs accurately. Um, the point of intersection appears to be at 1, 2, 3 for the x value, and then up 1, 2 for the y value. So I claim that the solution is 3, 2. Now, if you're unsure about that, you really should go ahead and check this. If I plug 3, 2 in here, I get 2 times 3 which is 6 plus 2 is 8, which is a true statement. And then I get 3 plus 3 times 2, which is 3 plus 6, which is 9. And that's a true statement. So it does check. Um, again, you know, it is possible that this intersection might be maybe 3.1 for the x value and maybe 1.9 for the y value. You just never know. So that's the, again, that's one of the downfalls of solving systems by graphing. Okay, I'll leave these for you to graph on your own, but uh, we did the first one here, but I just want to show you um, the three possibilities. If you solve a system with two equations and two unknowns, uh, there's three possibilities. One, the two lines could intersect at a unique point, 
And if you get a unique solution, we call that a consistent and independent system. Now, the two equations could represent the same line. These two equations here, if you actually solve them for y, you'll see that they actually give you the same line. So if you graph them, you really can't differentiate between the two lines. So for this system, every point that's on this line is a solution. So that would mean there's infinitely many solutions. If in that case, we call the, the system consistent because it has at least one solution, but since it has more than one, we call it also a dependent system. The, second exa the third example here, if you were to solve this uh, in terms of mx plus b, this, you know, the slope-intercept form, uh, you'll see that both of these lines have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. Uh, this one intersects the y-axis at 3, and this one intersects the y-axis way up here somewhere at 8. But they have the same slope. Well, since they have the same slope, there's no way they'll ever intersect, so there's going to be no solution for that one. And when there's no solution, we call that an inconsistent system. Okay, be sure and look at the other examples of solving by graphing that I've put here, but basically all I'm doing to graph is finding the x and y intercepts. The only time this would be an issue is if maybe your line went through the origin, and if your line went through the origin, then you would have to actually find another point. Okay, quick note about vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, if you have a line of the form x equal a constant, that is the graph of a that graph is a vertical line. And if you have a line where you the equation is y equal a constant, that is a horizontal line. So, for example, x equal to negative three is a vertical line that goes through the point negative three zero, but the line y equal to negative three is a horizontal line that goes through the point zero negative three. So down here, you'll see I have two equations, x minus y equal 3 and y equal negative 1. Well, let's focus on y equal negative 1. That's actually a horizontal line here, and you can see that, you know, it's, it's just a horizontal line that goes through negative 1. So, so that's the graph of that line, and then you can graph the other line by just plotting the x and y intercepts. And you'll see that when you graph these two lines, obviously the y value has to be negative 1 because it has to satisfy the second equation. But the x value is where they intersect, and they intersect at x equal 2. So the solution there would be the point 2, negative 1. Okay, you can read the instructions for substitution method, but basically what we're going to do, given this system here, I want to take one of these equations and solve them for one of the variables. So in order to make, make it easiest on me, I'm going to take the first equation here and I'm going to solve it for y because that's pretty easy to do. So if I take that first equation, I can just move the 2x to the other side. and I get y equals minus 2x plus 8. Now, then the reason we're going to do that is we want to substitute what y equals back into the other equation. Make sure you don't plug it into the one you got it from because that'll just give you a statement that's always true. So we're going to plug it back into this equation, this equation here, and let's see what we get. If we plug uh, minus 2x plus 8 for y into the second equation and simplify this, we get x minus 6x plus, uh, plus 24 equals 9. And then x minus 6x is minus 5x. And then if I move the 24 over here or you know, subtract it, 9 minus 24 is negative 15. And then so I solve this equation, negative 5x equals negative 15, and I get x equals 3. Now make sure you don't stop there because you still have to solve for the other variable. Now you can plug the 3 into either one of these two equations up here and solve for x. But actually, it's easier just to plug it in here, where we had used our, where we did our substitution step. So I'm going to plug three into that equation, 
and I get y equals minus 2 times 3 plus 8. Well, that's minus 6 plus 8, which is 2. So now I have the x value 3 and the y value 2, so that's my solution, 3, 2. Okay, I'll leave you to view number 2, but Notice it doesn't matter whether you solve for y in terms of x and substitute or if you solve for x in terms of y and substitute into the other equation. You generally want to do the easiest route which possible. Uh, and, and on both of these problems, you could go either way uh, on your substitution path. All right. This is an application problem, so just to give you an idea, um, it's concert selling adult and child tickets. Suppose a person buys two adult tickets and one child tickets for $8, and a second person paid $9 for one adult and three child tickets. Find the price of the adult and the child tickets. Well, the question here tells me what the variables represent. So I'm going to let X be the price of an adult ticket and Y the price of a child ticket. Now I have two conditions. I know the first purchase was two adult tickets and one child ticket and it totaled $8. The second person purchase was one adult ticket and three child tickets and that totaled um, actually $9. That's a typo there. But um, but anyway, um, when I put these together, I get 2x plus y equals 8, and x plus 3y equals 9. And then you can solve this by the substitution method to get 3 and 2. This is the same, prop, same system I think I solved earlier, so uh, you can go back and see that if you need to. Okay, I'll finish up the first video here. Just talk briefly about dependent and inconsistent systems when you're solving by substitution. Uh, on this problem, I'm going to take uh, this equation and I'm going to solve it for x. So I'll let you read through the algebra here, but I just take this equation and I do some algebra and I solve it for x. And then I'm going to substitute that equation into the second equation here for x. So when I do that, uh, I get 6 times minus 5 halves y plus a half plus 15y equals 3. Well, when you distribute the 6, that's actually going to be minus 15y plus 3. And then the minus 15y plus 15y cancels out. And so you get 3 on the left and 3 on the right, which is 3 equal 3. Well, that's a statement that's always true. We call that a, an identity. And when you get an identity statement, then we know the system has infinite number of solutions. So this is a dependent system. Now, if I change the problem just a little bit, notice all I did was change this sign here. Then, when I solve for x in terms of y, I get minus 5 halves y minus a half instead of plus a half. So when I plug that in to the uh, second equation, then, and distribute the 6, I get minus 15y minus 3 plus 15y. Well, the y's still cancel but this time I get minus 3 equals 3. And this is what we call an impossible equation or a contradiction. And when you get an equation like that, uh, that's a statement that can never be true. Therefore, this system has no solution. And so this would be an inconsistent system. And so in the next video, I'll pick up on some applications and the third method of solving systems of equations, which is the elimination method.